one thing that I've really noticed happens with this site is the permafrost as it melted and thawed over the years has caused artifacts or bones to settle and then it freezes and the ice will move something up. You'll actually find bones or stone tools ra rather than laying horizontal they'll be turned completely vertical so you'll find it buried in such a fashion that you can tell that the ice has been moving these artifacts around up and down. Archaeology is the way we know anything about the Denby people. It's our only source of information about past cultures. Oh, I did just find something sweet. Dang. Check this out. Oh, yeah, wow. chocolate by face. It's complete. This is pretty sweet. Oh my gosh. Right here. I'm actually, just looking down. I thought that was bone. Oh, that's pretty amazing. Got a complete in blade, classic Stinby in blade. What's the material? This is uh, chert, and it looks like it's the brown chert. I like to call it chocolate chert. <laughs> <laughs> nice find. Yeah, yeah this yeah. is a beautiful find. Pretty exciting. Denby people or their relatives lived across the whole circumpolar north uh, from Alaska to Greenland. So this is one of the interesting facets of this story is that they appear very rapidly, almost in an archaeological instant, as precisely as we can measure time with radiocarbon dating and those kind of techniques. We see Arctic small tool tradition people across the whole Arctic. I think about the, uh, the last human hands that touched this tool before Andes. Or they may have produced a lot of these, or maybe they did just drop it and they were like, dang it, where is, was that point at? How was I going to put that in my... Uh... The most characteristic thing is the, the techniques they were using to flake the stone. They're very uh, finely worked. They're, they were masterful craftspeople who made very delicate, well-made, regular tools. The way they produce these things is they'll have a larger core and they'll knock a large flake off of it. And then they'll take that large flake and shape it into these points. And what's characteristic of the Denby Flint Complex is that they have these little, tiny, intricate flake patterns. 15 minutes per, per tool. They were probably pretty expert flakers. Um, it looks like it's probably gray chert. They're tiny. And they're yeah, pretty small. It's a gray chert flake that I just excavated from my unit and it looks like it was used um, to as a reduction off of a larger piece of raw material. From that, we can tell, all right, this is part of the Arctic small tool tradition, which, as mentioned before, spans from Alaska across Canada to Greenland. It's like the most formal inscraper yet. Oh, good. Actually. But it looks like it's come off of a, yeah. off a plate. plate. Yeah, but that's how they make them. That is a classic <laughs> inscraper. Cool. One of the things that interests me about this site is the, um, the culture that it that Andy thinks it belongs to, the Denby complex people may have uh, come here by the way of Bering Strait uh, from Russia. And since I'm Russian myself, uh, I can relate to this kind of a journey. Louis Giddings, who, an archaeologist working back in the 40s and 50s, who defined the Denby Flint complex to describe the kinds of artifacts that are found in sites in parts of Alaska that date to about 4,200 years ago to about 3,000 years ago. And what we've generally found in Denby sites are stone tools. They're well preserved. They're the things that are left in sites after everything else is rotted away. I'm actually more excited about the bones than the stone tools here because so few sites that are related to this group have organic material that has been preserved. We've uncovered organic tools, some of which exhibit artwork, which was never known before for the Denby group. It gives us a greater understanding of their technology in general. There's hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of bones at Matrack Lake. They're well-preserved. You can identify 
what animals they're from, the age of the animal, the sex of the animal in many cases. So you can really flesh out a lot of detail about the season the site was occupied, the kinds of animals people were eating, how they were processing the animals. So all kinds of detail about Denby life that just unattainable at most Denby sites. I think much more advanced than what you would guess for people that moved into the Arctic 4,000 years ago. But then again, to live in this, this harsh of a climate, yeah, we got some, some crud. <laughs> you have to have some fairly unique and well-designed technology to create the clothing, the housing, and the, the implements for hunting the animals up here. I think it's really neat and fun to excavate. <laughs> So you have some very old sites, sites that are as old as this in Greenland. One of the big questions about people that made the Arctic small tools is how they spread so rapidly across the Arctic. Why were they so mobile? Why did they feel the need to move so far, so fast? 